Fantastic. Thank you so much for that warm introduction there, Ben. Um, I'm just going to get my PowerPoint up for you so that you can all see that. Fantastic. So, um, thank you. Hello. Welcome. Um, I am indeed the uh, Director of Boarding here at uh, Downhouse. Um, I was so pleased actually when Howard asked me to uh, present today, um, as it means I get to spend the, uh, the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes talking about a subject that I am incredibly passionate about, uh, which is um, how boarding schools prepare their young women for the future. So um, here at Down House, I'm also um, a sixth form house mistress um, and a higher education advisor. So I spend a lot of time with our older girls um, who are obviously imminently uh, due to leave us and, and uh, start their exciting journeys beyond our school gates. So I really do have quite a vested interest in ensuring that they are fully prepared for what is to come. And I think now more than ever, uh, as we navigate our way through a global pandemic, um, we've been able to see actually how our girls have been able to put many of their skills to the test, showing really great resilience, perseverance and overcoming those challenges and embracing the opportunities that digital learning um, provided to us um, at the start of the lockdown. We are now back in session, we are open and our girls are with us and it's so rewarding to see them again um, and how adaptable um, they have been and, and they are still being now. We see that that is a great indication that they are successfully navigating this global pandemic um, and that we're probably then on the right track in terms of the skills development that we've been doing with them. So here at Down, we have always understood the really important role that a school plays in forming the foundations of skills that our students will go on to use throughout their lives. Um, and we do this in so many different ways. However, um, we wanted to be able to easily show our parents um, and prospective parents, as well as our girls, uh, a tangible document um, that talks about all of the things that we do offer. And so um, that was where our World Ready program um, was born from. All of the skills building activities that we mention in our World Ready brochure, and we're going to go through some of those today, uh, were already in existence at the school. But breaking the skills down into these five um, key skill sets allows us to really constantly question um, how we address those skill, skills areas. Um, and that allows us to ensure that our girls are well prepared for life outside of the school gates. Now, I can't possibly go through with you all that is on offer for our girls here at Down House, as we would literally be here all week, I think. Um, but I do hope that in the time that I do have, I can give you just a glimpse, um, a bit of a flavour of what we do within these five skill set areas to help support our girls um, and develop those specific skills that they will need um, out in the, the real world. So if I start with um, academic skills. So here at Down, we recognise just how important it is for girls to be self-aware about their own academic skills. And whilst our amazing teachers here equip our girls with those skills routinely through um, the overt teaching, um, as well as feedback and the support they give, we also offer a whole host of ways uh, for our girls to develop their academic skills outside of the classroom. So we have a really varied selection of student-run clubs, um, including things like debating, law society, medic society, to name just a few. Um, we feel those really help the girls to gain exposure to academic content that they might otherwise not encounter through their A-level studies. We also deliver an incredible elective program, um, and that's what you can see there on the, um, the slide, where girls can sign up to attend lectures and workshops on topics which might pique their interest outside of their curriculum subjects. So last year's program included sessions ranging from the physics of transport uh, through to the greats of Russian literature. So it's a really varied mix um, and it really does challenge the intellectually curious, which is the, the strapline we, we gave to the elective programme. 
In the lower sixth, um, we also take our girls through a six week higher education and research skills um, program, which we call HERS, which focuses on ensuring that the girls can hit the ground running with their A level studies. Um, by looking at how to develop skills such as referencing, um, effective note taking, critical thinking and presentation skills. Not only does this help the girls adapt to the more rigorous nature of A-level, but it also gives them a head start if they choose to go on to university, which can otherwise be quite a daunting prospect and can be quite different in terms of how you learn uh, from A-level. So we also offer uh, the extended project qualification, uh, the EPQ, uh, which around half of our lower sixth will undertake in addition to their A-level subjects. This again is a great way for them to delve deeper into an area which interests them and is not restricted by the confines of a curriculum. Moving on then to life skills. So life skills are of course modelled um, to the students in, in all that we do and all of the staff that they come into contact with. Um, especially uh, that being the case, I think, in boarding schools where the girls are with their pastoral and academic staff um, throughout the day um, and uh, often at the weekends as well. However, we also have a Learning for Life programme, uh, which is often um, referred to as uh, PSHE uh, in other schools, which all of our girls attend each week. Um, and through that, we're able to teach the girls uh, topics like online safety or managing relationships, the importance of finding balance and maintaining well-being. This then runs alongside our well-being programme that we offer, which includes in-house well-being resources, well-being activities like yoga and mindfulness, as well as educational lectures and workshops that the girls can attend. In the sixth form, that programme develops into an age-appropriate uh, enrichment lecture programme, which covers topics like um, gap year safety, if they want to take a gap year before university, <clears throat> as well as what to expect at university. Um, and we do a presentation called How to Survive Your First uh, Weeks at University. Uh, so really thinking about the skills that they're going to need to, to use uh, once they leave the, the school gates. Tailored guidance um, is also given to um, our girls through our tutor system, which sees um, each of our girls having an allocated tutor uh, who sees them for uh, about 30 minutes a week to discuss academic matters. Um, so that's a one-to-one -one process. This is a really crucial relationship for our girls uh, and they have it from day one um, when they join us. Uh, right through um, to the upper sixth before they leave us. It allows them to reflect on their educational journey um, and receive guidance on how to keep challenging themselves, both um, academically um, and pastorally. Tutors uh, may focus on specific skills with their tutees, helping to um, build things like organisational skills, time management skills, um, or maybe encouraging them uh, to create balance between their academic commitments and their extracurricular activities. This relationship then supports the key work of the boarding staff, who also offer excellent in, uh, an excellent in-house programme uh, for the girls, which is uh, age appropriate as well. The boarding staff and tutors are also helped by um, our AS tracking data. Uh, which is gathered from our girls twice a year uh, and helps to track their mental well-being. All of our girls have access to um, our DH Links programme, which is our uh, alumni, parents and careers network. Uh, and this allows girls to develop contacts and opportunities for things like work experience, um, to do uh, masterclasses, or simply to ask for advice from someone who works in um, an industry that they may be looking at um, joining later in life. Many of the things I have already discussed cross over under this um, skills heading of metacognitive skills. Um, but we do offer a couple of opportunities to our girls that I really wanted uh, to touch upon here, which help them to develop the ability to really think about their own thinking, um, being reflective and being able to act upon that reflection. 
So our mentoring programme here uh, offers our lower six girls the opportunity to train to become either an academic mentor or a pastoral mentor. Not only do those um, roles help them develop their soft skills, but a key part of the training that we offer them is that they have to be able to reflect on their own experiences, on their own skills, um, and then be able to go on to say what they have learned from them in order to be able to better support their peers. These are really highly transferable skills, which they can then take with them into university or, or beyond into the workplace. And I'm always so pleased when one of my old girls contacts me to say that she is now a peer mentor at her university, for example, or that she uh, was able to talk about her experiences of um, mentoring and the skills that she learned at a job interview. Positions of um, leadership, are also a great way uh, of a girl developing her metacognitive skills. And our seniors, um, often known as prefects um, at other schools, all undertake training which encourages them to think about how they can be effective in their positions of responsibility, uh, analysing what has gone before and seeing where they can make uh, a positive impact. Being a role model for their peers also encourages them to think about their actions and take responsibility for the impact that they can have on others. Our seniors often learn a really valuable lesson actually um, by undertaking their roles that leadership is not necessarily as easy as it might look from the outside. Soft skills, um, these are learned in so many ways um, but some of the exciting opportunities that our girls have um, particularly as they get up into the sixth form and start their um, A levels, real um, things like compassion, teamwork, um, and those all important communication skills. Many of our girls choose to take up one of the extracurricular activities that we offer, um, from Gold Duke of Edinburgh Award uh, to the Leith's Cookery Qualification, um, and uh, Young Enterprise is another um, popular choice. Each one of those um, is designed to really help equip them with a whole host of skills that they can then um, develop and apply to situations that they encounter in the future. So the last of the five um, core skill sets that we look at is employment skills. Um, and this is something we really start to expose our girls to right from the start of their journey with us at Downhouse. Um, and obviously intensifying as they join us in the sixth form um, and are uh, imminently uh, leaving us. Our higher education programme is really extensive. Um, it starts with um, things like careers talks and presentations um, when the girls are lower down the school. It moves into um, some psychometric uh, profiling um, and work experience in the upper school and then culminates in a really tailored specialist one-to-one -one higher education guidance when they join us in the sixth form. We have a whole range of specialist advisors for UK applications, overseas applications, creative and Oxbridge applicants. Uh, though those specialists are all there to fully support the, the girls as an individual and ensure that her choices help to set her on the path that she wants in terms of her career aspirations. So from lectures to interview workshops um, to actually an entire higher education day uh, that we do with our lower sixth girls, the girls really are equipped to make informed choices uh, about their future. We also offer the Ivy House Award to our sixth form girls uh, to help them recognise their potential and be proactive in managing their own destiny. The girls who complete the course regularly feedback to us um, how much of what they learned they still apply in their daily lives, uh, even if they're now at university or they've gone on to the workplace. So alongside um, all of the skills building activities that we offer, um, there is also a whole range of experiences um, for our girls to take part in, which help them to see outside the gates of uh, Down House and into the world that they will inevitably entering, uh, be entering once they leave us. 
So our girls have lots of opportunities to socialise uh, with other schools. Um, and that's both on an academic level um, as well as a, a pastoral and, and social level. There is a whole school focus on charity and outreach and each of our boarding houses uh, has a charity that they raise money for um, and they even visit um, around the world uh, on a regular basis as well. Our academic departments offer trips to extend the curriculum and put theory into practice too, uh, which has seen our girls visiting some incredible places, uh, most recently uh, places like Iceland uh, and Russia. We also have an incredibly popular global schools exchange program. Um, that's for our year 10 and 11 girls, and that sees them um, going off to experience school life across the globe um, from Japan to the USA um, and we very much enjoy um, hosting uh, the girls in return here at Downhouse too. So we have 16 partner schools um, and counting um, who help to give our girls excellent exposure uh, to other cultures and other ways of living um, and they are often truly once in a lifetime transformative experiences for the girls um, that undertake them. The programme then develops in our sixth form into um, what we call our Global Internships programme um, and that sees girls uh, again heading off around the world uh, to places like Canada, Hong Kong um, and Australia, uh, just to name a few, where they get to experience um, a taste of working uh, internationally at some incredible multinational companies. Um, our year eight girls also experience uh, a term in France at our school there, Sauveterre, um, uh, and that's often um, one of the first times our girls will have had a, a truly immersive uh, experience in another country. And they leave their term there with not only impressive language skills, um, but lifelong memories of the experiences that they've, that they've had whilst they're there uh, and that they've gained from developing a real understanding of a different culture and a different way of life. Um, so again, an amazing experience for our girls to be able to, uh, to undertake that helps equip them um, with those uh, uh, skills for being outward looking. So I will leave it there. <laughs> um, I could literally talk all day about how girls boarding uh, can prepare um, girls for their futures. But um, hopefully this has given you a bit of a flavour um, for what uh, boarding schools can offer and reassured you actually that if you are considering girls boarding, then you are absolutely making the right decision. Um, I may be a little biased there, but uh, that's certainly, certainly my opinion. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, so we'll begin the Q&A session of uh, your presentation today. And uh, I'll begin with the first question. Um, so the first question is for Downhouse, uh, how does the school make sure that students are healthy and how strong is the pastoral care, especially uh, during a time such as this and, and during normal days? So um, I think it's, so I, I mentioned the, um, the tutor system that we have here, the academic one-to-one um, -one tutoring system, which is a, a big part of the um, pastoral care that we offer. Um, our boarding houses um, all have um, a, a team of resident uh, boarding staff um, who get to know the girls incredibly well. Um, obviously, we are a full boarding school, so the girls are with us um, not only through the week, but also at the weekends, um, where they have a, a huge array of activities on offer. Um, and they get to spend a lot of time with their, uh, with their boarding staff and with each other. So um, from a pastoral point of view, we know our girls incredibly well and uh, we are very much child-centred. So um, the care that we offer um, fits uh, each individual girl um, as, she, as she needs it. Um, I think that answered the question, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you, Ellie. Uh, great. Uh, next question is, um, what are the years of entry available at Downhouse and what years would you recommend for entry? So we offer um, uh, entry at uh, 11, 12 and 13 plus. Um, we, we don't make a recommendation for which of those years um, you should join us. What we say is that if you are happy, if your, your daughter is happy in the, the, um, the prep school or the, the junior school that she's in and she wants to stay there until she's um, 13, 
then that's absolutely the right decision for you and we will welcome her at that stage. If you're in a school that doesn't go up to that high and you want to join us at 11 plus, again, we would absolutely welcome you at that stage. It's got to be right for the student. Um, sometimes uh, stu if students have been at a, a junior school or a prep school, um, they need to experience going all the way through um, up to year 13. Um, they're really maybe quite excited about being the head of the school um, and that might be able to teach them some additional responsibility, uh, etc. So if that's the right choice to stay at that school and then join us at 13 plus, that's absolutely fine. Um, the only thing I would say is we do offer our term in France um, during the 12 plus year. So that is something that tempts um, some of our, our prospective students and parents in um, because they want to be able to take part in that um, at the 12 plus stage. Thank you. And just to clarify, uh, would uh, a child at year 10 be able to apply for entry? Um, we, we don't uh, tend to take entry at that stage. Um, uh, the, the uh, official entry uh, stages that we have are um, 11, 12, uh, 13 plus, and then 16 plus. So they could join us uh, as a new student in a sixth form. Um, but obviously with GCSEs, um, we wouldn't advise that that's the right time uh, to join a new school. Understood, thank you. Um, and next question is in terms of diversity at your school, um, what is the ratio between uh, you know, the different ethnicities at your school? And then on second, on top of that is, uh, how many Hong Kongers do you uh, usually have at your school population? Okay, so we, um, we have uh, between kind of 15 to 20% of tier four visa holders. Um, so um, within that um, field, we have a really eclectic mix of girls from all over the world. Um, Hong Kong nationals are um, uh, probably our biggest uh, intake group. It does differ um, from year to year. Um, but yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be around 15 to 20% that are international. And of that, I wouldn't want to hazard a guess of what it is at the moment, I'm afraid, um, specifically for Hong Kong, but they are the biggest intake group within our international um, uh, field. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I have another question here. Um, it's regarding the school's policy on uh, bullying. How are such incidents handled at Downhouse? So um, I think we're, we're very lucky um, here that because of the, the type of um, care, the, the pastoral care that the girls get, um, we do have very few incidences of, of bullying, um, but they do happen. Um, I, I think there's no point in denying that and they happen in all schools. Um, and when they do, it's very much about, um, with our child-centered approach, it, it's really about talking to the girls involved and finding out more information about um, why it's occurring and, and what's happening and then putting structures in place um, to to try and help resolve um, any issues that um, have come about uh, between students. Um, we obviously as all schools I'm sure will have um, a, a rigorous um, uh, system um, for uh, dealing with uh, poor behaviour if we should encounter it but, but often at the heart of it it's about talking to the girls um, you know, we, we don't jump straight in with a punishment for something. We want to find out why so that we can ensure that it doesn't happen again in the future. Um, and that approach um, seems to work for us really well. Um, and it allows our girls to be able to learn um, some emotional um, lessons and be able to move forward. Thank you, Ali. Uh, and the next question is just to clarify for some of our viewers, uh, what curriculums uh, are offered at Downhouse and uh, for um, testing for A levels, uh, pre U, when should uh, the girls choose which exam type to be taking? Okay, so um, for GCSE, we follow the um, uh, GCSE and I GCSE curriculum, so we have a, a mixture of the two um, curriculums. And then in the sixth form, we have predominantly A levels. Um, we currently do have, I think, a couple of pre-U qualifications, um, but we, we have been moving uh, more towards um, A-level curriculums. Um, and we obviously follow the two-year uh, linear uh, A-levels, which are now in place uh, in the UK. Um, so 
in terms of, sorry, was the question if a girl is joining us, when do they decide which subjects to do? Or do you mean if there's a choice because there, there isn't a choice, they would be following A-level? I believe it was if there was a choice. <laughs> so. Okay. So no, we, we don't we don't offer the IB. So they if they're coming to us in the sixth form, they just choose their subjects for A level. Understood. Thank you, Ellie. And I believe uh, we probably have uh, enough time for one more question. Uh, the last question is, how do you prepare girls for the future? Uh, and uh, a second question on top of that is, what universities do uh, the girls that, grad that leave Downhouse typically enter? Okay, so um, how do we prepare girls for the future? I mean, hopefully my presentation covered some of the, the things that we do. Um, I mean, the future um, is a complete unknown. Um, however, um, the, the approach that, that we take as a school is that if we can equip the girls with those transferable skills, then it really doesn't matter what they encounter, um, what career they end up uh, going into, they will have those core skills to help them deal with that um, and face any challenges and opportunities that, that come their way. Um, obviously, we, we live in a world where technology is moving so fast and um, industries uh, are developing and changing and we may well have girls leaving us now that end up in a job that doesn't even exist at the moment. So we couldn't possibly equip them with um, uh, the, the right knowledge for those jobs necessarily, but we can equip them with the skills uh, that are transferable and, and can be uh, applied to any situation that they go into. Um, sorry, Wallace, remind me the second part of the question. Is uh, what universities do uh, girls that leave down has typically enter? Okay, so the vast majority of our girls go on to um, what we call Russell Group uh, Universities uh, in the UK. Um, and when I say the majority, um, that's generally kind of uh, mid-90s uh, percentage-wise uh, would be going into um, one, of our, one of the Russell Group uh, universities. Um, so the cohort that have just gone through, for example, um, our most popular university was uh, Exeter. Um, in terms of um, uh, kind of to give you a bit more destination analysis uh, type information, um, the vast majority of our girls this year um, and, and indeed in previous years uh, get their first choice university um, as well. So um, we do have uh, within uh, our cohort every year in the upper sixth, we will have girls that apply for um, more creative um, courses. So um, they might go on to do an art foundation or a drama foundation or a music uh, course. Um, we always have uh, an Oxbridge cohort, uh, which this year was incredibly healthy. All of the girls that applied to Oxbridge got their places, which is fantastic. Um, the um, other uh, area is overseas um, universities, uh, which uh, changes. is a bit of a changing picture with all the things that are happening um, globally uh, and in the UK. Um, but we, we always have a, a healthy overseas cohort um, with girls going off um, around the world. Uh, the US tends to be our most popular destination, but we've seen in recent years Canada growing in popularity uh, as well. We have girls that go to Australia, Europe. Um, so uh, we, we, our team here is fully equipped to deal with um, anything uh, in terms of where the girls might want to go. Thank you, Ali. Uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, so before I let you go, do you have any last words for our attendees? Just that I hope you really enjoy the rest of the, um, the presentations today. Um, from a, a Downhouse uh, specific point of view, if you'd like to know anything more about Downhouse, please do get in contact with us. Um, our amazing um, uh, uh, head of admissions, um, Mrs. Angela Nutt, would be overjoyed to hear from you um, and can certainly answer any more specific questions if you have any about the process for um, applying or finding out more um, about Downhouse specifically.